Okay, well, actually, and in answering that, that question, I'm going to stick to three points and try and draw two quick conclusions from those points. Uh, firstly, the statement would be that academia is at the heart of innovation. And the reason is, is for our competitive advantage, we have excellence built in as a bedrock of everything that globally competitive universities do. Secondly, to, to tackle global grand challenges, we have the multidisciplinarity and the global reach that is absolutely vital towards that spirit of innovation. And we all have to think in the long term. And I'll come back to that. Remember, for the biomedical sciences, 17 years for a discovery, not the political lifespan of four or five years. Secondly, I don't believe you can have innovation without basic research. And I don't just mean that in the sciences. I mean that equally for the creative arts. We've just heard how important understanding the history of fashion is to new innovation. That is as much research as research carried out by an astrophysicist. So research, basic research, is absolutely vital. Cutting that is not the way forward uh, to help innovation for the future. And thirdly, the third introductory comment would be around regional development. This is really important for Europe in going forward. Let me just give you an example of a thing called the Cambridge Phenomenon, which started 50 years ago. To understand this, you have to understand the geography of the United Kingdom. Cambridge is actually a very small city. It's only 100,000 people. And our whole region that drains into Cambridge is only 600,000 further. So 700,000 people out of a UK population of 70 million. From the ideas spawned from the university over the 50 years, we have now created 1,000 technology and biotechnology companies in this small region, which with the supply chain companies now amount to 1,400 companies in this small region. It's now producing 18% of all new British high-tech industry in this tiny region as a result of the innovation that emanates from the university. What does that mean to politicians? 40,000 jobs in this small region. So it can work in Britain just as much as it can work in Silicon Valley. We euphemistically call ourselves Silicon Fen as a, a, a consequence. <laughs> I wish we were as large as the valley. So let me go back to two lessons from all of this from, from my point of view. I think governments need to look to universities to help in this agenda. And universities need to respond because, A, we can... Secondly, we do innovation as an inherent part of our activity, and we are geared towards helping. We produce the workforce, and we're good at solving complicated problems, particularly when you get to multinational problems. That's what the multidisciplinarity gives you. We have a responsibility, though, to build bridges to industry, and most of the very successful universities in Europe and in the world have at their heart this desire to interface uh, with industry. But let me turn to the other side of the coin, and this one might not be so comfortable for Euro politicians, and that comes down to autonomy. Governments actually need to trust the universities to do the job. Politicians can only think in four-year, five-year time spans. That's the electoral cycle. They have a responsibility to put the economy back on its feet. We need to help to contribute to that. But discoveries will take 12 to 17 years to get to fruition. Or as I keep saying to a politician, you will never benefit electorally from the investment you'll make. And yet there is no investment that you can make that's more valuable for the future of mankind. So governments need to stop micromanaging. They need to have long-term vision. And they've got to understand that from where I sit, if we disagree with the politician, I will argue we get it right, they get it wrong. So autonomy is not a luxury uh, in difficult times. It's an absolute necessity, and we've got to be freed from those constraints that are very often imposed on us by external funding forces. Excellent. Thank you. Very, uh, very forceful remarks. Uh, I'll pick up on what you said about interdisciplinary. 
because I think it's so important because innovation really takes place at sort of the intersection of different disciplines. And I think that you're absolutely right to point out that the universities are sort of natural places where all of this can come together because the fact is we think so much in silos, you know, that, that, uh, that the new way of doing things is really to, bridge, to build bridges and to collaborate and to, to break all of this open. And, uh, and I hear what you're saying about the university being, uh, being a natural place to do so, provided you have the autonomy and the trust. This is actually, I think, I don't know who said it before, but this is the second time today that someone brought up the word trust. And perhaps we can reflect a little bit on that later in the discussion. Now, our last speaker today is no other than Ben Vervayen, the CEO of Alcatel uh, Lucent, one of Europe's most research-intensive uh, companies uh, with operations in more than 130 countries. Uh, ben himself is someone who really needs no introduction. As one of Europe's most uh, prominent and really visionary CEOs, you can look back on a most uh, distinguished uh, career uh, with more than 30 years of experience in the ICT sector. So clearly, you have a very unique, you have a very valuable perspective on innovation in Europe. And Ben, we look forward to, uh, to your remarks.